the Star Writers Club. This is going to be Mary's second book in the trilogy. The first one, The Girl in the Twall Wallpaper, has won numerous awards, and that's about a young lady who gets stuck in some wallpaper. And she's in there for hundreds of years until her knight in shiny white armor, not literally, comes to rescue her. In the second book, The Star Writers Club, this is about 12 in young teens uh, who are meet their sudden demise and they are sent to the band around heaven and they are offered a position in the Star Writers Club. But they soon find out that their position in the club <laughs> is anything but a great position. Uh, they have to uh, go into the gates of hell uh, to save uh, a few of their uh, team teammates. So Mary K. Savarese, uh, she currently lives in Florida. Uh, she is the uh, uh, the author of Tiger's Love Bubble Bath, an obsession perfume. Who knew? Which is also an award winning uh, bestseller uh, that came out maybe five or six years ago. And uh, you you need to get with her her novels. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, she delves into the spiritual realm like no one I have ever met, and it's uplifting. And it it also gives us uh, hope of what our future may be in store for us. So I'm going to read you chapter one of the Star Writers Club, and. Um, Check out our website for more information on our books and see which books are coming out soon. But this one is available for pre-order and it'll be released on July in mid-July, around July 15th, I believe it is. All right, thank you and enjoy book one, uh, book two. I'm sorry, book two of the Star Writers Club. Chapter one, 1:13 a.m. November 13th. With her long golden blonde hair waving past her shoulders and standing a little over 5'7", M. Iverson, 16, hated her many freckles. For that matter, she didn't like dresses or anything frilly. Her thoughts concentrated only on sports or boys. The harder her heart pounded, the better she felt. Usually, she could sense the beats from inside her head. But now, nothing. M. felt nothing and a darkness blacker than black surrounded her. No sound, no vibration, no anything. She couldn't even remember what she was doing a few minutes ago, now that she thought about it. She couldn't remember yesterday, or the day before that, or the day before that. A sweet melody of laughter echoed, filling her with a yearning for home. She glanced around and, Is that one of my younger sisters? It sounded like Lisbeth who just turned 13, or maybe it was Cecilia, who wouldn't be 10 for another few weeks. Liz? No name escaped her lips. Em reached out. Her hand swiped through an emptiness that felt odd, foreign, unnatural. Taking in a deep breath, she held back the urge to panic. See? Again, no sound. No pounding heart. No anything. A speckle of light hovered somewhere along the horizon, although there was no horizon, no sky, no ground, no walls. Her eyes tried to focus on the little dot that seemed to be growing. Where am I? No heat, no coldness, no wind, no stillness. Everything, including her, drifted effortlessly inside this complete blackness. The light was now expanding, seeming larger than her hands. For some odd reason, the urge to run into the light felt overpowering. Her legs refused to move, but the black void that surrounded her was shrinking, somehow. The light didn't glow exactly, but the growing dot was now consuming the darkness. Mom? Em yelled, and again no sound passed her lips. She watched as the light grew wider and taller and more vast than her snow-topped mountains back home. However, the light did not shine, remaining inside its ever-glowing circle. When the light filled her vision, she tried to see behind her, but the blackness seemed to be rejecting her, pressing her ever deeper into the light. When the whiteness finally consumed her view, she screamed again, Mom! 
A new type of warmness surrounded her that felt somewhat different, possessing every ounce of her inner being, overfilling her with an indescribable joy, a sheer ecstasy that felt unworldly but still reminding her of home. The blinding light wasn't painful, not exactly. Whatever was consuming her was a finality. How she knew that, she had no idea. But it was forever, when an emotion of complete love exploded with a deep, recognizable longing, M released her soul and dissolved into the illumination. As she became one with her maker, M's cardinal life was no more. It was Wednesday morning and just a typical day for school, standing at the granite camp, granite island of their recently updated kitchen, Cecilia, a.k.a. the Snoop, made a few smooching sounds. Oh, Bowden, where are you? Sit back here with me on the plane. Keeping one eye on him and the other on her sister, Liz, she waited. Shut up, C. M wanted to shoot herself for leaving her phone unlocked. The Snoop had read her text and now had ammunition to use against her. Bowden was a scheme t ski team partner and they were still in training. To stand on the Alps with no little sister would be a dream come true. Knock it off, C. We gotta make the bus, Liz said. Mom'll ground us if she has to drive. Not hungry anyway, C replied. Have a great time, M, Elizabeth said, hoisting her backpack over her shoulder before darting out the side door. M glanced up from the refrigerator and nodded. Cecilia grabbed her backpack and smiled. Have fun at school, C, M said, still rummaging through the fridge. I'll miss you. Cecilia rammed herself into M, wrapping her arms around her. M chuckled. <laughs> Love you, too. The back door slammed shut as her mother placed her purse on the counter. Can't believe the long lines at the gas station. Is your father down yet? No. M took a bite from her breakfast burrito. Ah, hot. Careful, her mother replied. Always hot when you put them in the microwave. M nodded. Her mother grabbed the kitchen rag and wiped the counter. At least they made the bus. Your, your passport packed? We have an hour's drive with traffic. Yes, Mom, M stared at her breakfast and smiled as she thought about Bowden sitting next to her in her mom's car. Late for an appointment, her father said, stealing a kiss from M's forehead. Gotta go. You have a great time. And don't do anything stupid. God knows how much this trip is costing me. Love you. Love you too, Dad, M smiled. And thanks. You're welcome. Have a great time. Tossing the rag into the sink, her mother sighed. Brian? What time are you coming home? Around six. He kissed her mother and darted out the door. M waved. M's roommate, Danny, yelled, You get the bathroom first. M didn't move. Come on, Danny said, shaking her. We said we'd take turns. Get your ass up. She threw her pillow at the back of M's head. Again, M didn't move. M, Danny yelled, wake up. Danny shook M's shoulder. She pulled M's hair from her eyes and screamed. M's face was a light blue and felt cold to the touch. Danny screamed again and ran from the room. The hallway was filled with students. She pushed a girl out of the way and squeezed between two others. Hey, a girl yelled. Danny tried to breathe, but it felt as if her head was covered in plastic. She banged on the door, catching her breath. It cracked open. An older woman peered out. What is it? Kanka, come now, come now. What is it? The woman asked again. Open the door a little more. My roommate, Em, is dead. The floor, with a, with a bright white light, should have been blinding. Em looked down and frowned. It wasn't a light, not exactly, but more of a no darkness. The purest of anything she'd ever seen. Brown leather sandals now decorated her feet and a beige toga belted with a brown leather strap hugged her body. Reaching down, she grabbed her robe and sighed. What am I wearing? The material felt silk-like and smooth to the touch, almost as if she were holding a liquid ribbon in her hand. Again, she glanced down. Where am I? A young man stepped forward. His dark black skin was rather a stark contrast to his long white braids. 
As he walked, the space between them seemed to shrink as if they were being pulled together by an unseen but powerful force. The man made her feel somewhat, although she wasn't sure what. Im touched her chest and took in a deeper breath. The young man was not much older than her. His long, white, braided hair was decorated with streaks of black bands that seemed to take on a life of their own. The closer he walked, the darker his skin shone in the bright light. His features reminded her of someone from the islands. His crystal blue eyes were mesmerizing. Wearing khaki pants and a white button-down shirt, he reminded her of a tour guide from New Hampshire College. He's cuter, though. More of a frat than a nerd. Maybe that explains my toga. Am I at college? How did I get here? Why can't I remember anything? Welcome, Em. My name is Michael. His voice sounded more like musical chimes than human words. Who's Em? You are Amika Iverson. However, your friends call you Em. I am Michael. You're talking, but your lips aren't moving. How can I understand? How do you know my name? Are my lips moving? She reached up and touched her mouth. To answer your question, you're not in college, and how do you know what I was thinking? Em took a step back. I apologize. He nodded and reached out. Em shrugged, accepting his gesture of friendship. When their hands touched, a strong sensation of warmth flooded through her. She stiffened and stared into his piercing blue eyes. She smiled, for he was somewhat possessive and begilding at the same time. Have we met? Em asked. Walk with me, Michael said with a huge grin. He held out a tablet that had two words written in bold black lettering. The list. But his list was blank. <laughs>